The two popes, stars Jonathan Price and Anthony Hopkins as Pope Francis and Pope Benedict, both have been nominated for Golden Globes, and uh, the film it will compete for Golden Globes this weekend. I'm Tony Ruiz, contributing editor of Gold Derby, with Jonathan Price. And Jonathan, I had read that when you start, first were offered this, that there was some hesitation um, that you were wary to take on the part of Pope Francis. Uh, was that true? And, and what was the hesitation, and how did you decide to finally do it? Well, I, I, I've played a lot of um, real life characters in, in the past. Um, when I say real life, most of them have been dead. Um, <laughs> so it was just the idea that, I, you know, could I possibly match up to a, an image of the Pope that uh, the world was very aware of? Um, I also had rather stupidly a, a historic memory of when Robert Powell was asked to play Jesus Christ. And I, I saw the similarities between playing the Pope and playing Christ. And it changed his life completely. He, of course, he was much younger, but uh, um, I think he, he suffered from being um, seen as Christ for a long time. But I've, I've not got that long left to be seen as the Pope, so I'm okay. <laughs> well, and it's interesting to me because when I was watching the film, you know, it's called The Two Popes because it's about these two men. but. Francis himself does seem to have, there's a duality to him because there's this image that a lot of us see uh, of Pope Francis as this kind of genial man, but there's, the film explores, you know, kind of the, the darker, more, you know, doubtful side of him. So uh, what do you think is, where do you think the real Francis lies in those two kind of extremes? Well, I, 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 I can't make any great claims where he lies, but as an actor um, trying to um, uh, build an image of this man, it's um, like I do with fictional characters. I try to find their weaknesses and the vulnerable areas. And that time in Buenos Aires for him um, was really difficult when he was uh, accused of collaborating with the colonels. And, um, you know, the film sees this young man who has an epiphany he becomes archbishop cardinal of uh, buenos aires and um then there's this very troubled part of his life um uh, which that then leads to rome where you he presents an entirely different picture of himself um and i suppose talking to people in buenos aires who knew him had worked with him other priests had worked with him when they saw him on the balcony uh smiling when he was made pope uh, they didn't recognize him because they knew him as the man who um, never smiled. He was, he was, they said he was a, a disciplinarian and he was very strict and followed the teachings of the church. Um, so, you know, you put all those things together, you end up with a, a very interesting man who is uh, Pope Francis and you see his weaknesses and then the film exploits his strengths as he becomes Pope. Do you think one of the things that I was thinking of is like there seems to be like there's that whole scene in the beginning where, you know, where Ratzinger is becoming Pope Benedict. And there's this oh, the, the camera keeps cutting back to Pope Francis and it's like, oh, God, is he do you think he's a reluctant pope? Do you think that the that yeah. he has embraced his position at this point or do you, was that hesitancy part of the man that you wanted to portray? Well, I, I think like. It's, um, I draw parallels with my own life in that uh, I, I'm, was, uh, I never intended to be an actor. And I know people who, who were very successful in other fields who never started off in that field. Um, so they're not living out some dream that can only disappoint you. Um, so that I, and I see Francis in that shape. He, he didn't want to be, he says, he didn't want to be Pope. Um, but it was kind of thrust upon him, and it, um, and I think he's all the better uh, a figure for it, in that uh, it was it was a new awakening for him. It's a new life and a time when he could put into effect all the things he believed in, which weren't uh, necessarily part of the church, but part of uh, what he could do to change society. So when a, this film is a is really a two hander between you and Anthony Hopkins, and I know you two hadn't really worked together at least on screen before. So what was that dynamic uh, between you two? How did you two work together? What was your experience with that? Well, it's um, 
like when you uh, meet, um, and I like actors, I like fellow actors, I like working with actors. Um, and there was a, part, a bit of uh, nervousness surrounding uh, working with Tony. I was a, a great admirer of him. Um, I still am. <laughs> and, uh, um, I was kind of like a fan in a way. And I didn't know how he worked or how he was going to react on the set. Um, he has a very strong presence. And I think I allowed it to work into how we were working together in the scene in that um, I'm quite wary of him, or Bergoglio is quite wary of him, uh, when we start those scenes together and slowly that friendship grows and uh, they become more comfortable in each other's presence. And um, it did mirror what happened with uh, me and Tony in that uh, I grew to uh, admire him even more um we became uh great friends and we had a lot of fun together um on set and off set um and it was also it was it worked so well because we were in the presence of fernando morales who who creates um unconsciously in a way a great atmosphere on set where um most people are they're working very hard but it's a very relaxed atmosphere there's no uh um, great pressure has been put on people. And um, it was, I think, that have happened to me and to Tony, that we were quite relaxed about uh, working together. Um, no, it, it was great. And it, 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 like I say, the, it, um, the film reflects that relationship, both in person and in the script. Well, and you talk about Fernando Morellis, who's one of my favorite directors um, and is known as being a great director of actors. So how did he specifically work with the two of you? Did you guys have freedom? Did you did you have freedom to try things? Uh, what was that experience like? I think well, you, it's kind of prescribed how you're going to behave because uh, these two men exist and, and these events that they are talking about, although, you know, the, the event of the, their meeting and uh, my going to the Vatican um, to resign that's completely fabricated um but everything that they we say in the film they either say in speeches or they've written in books and essays so there was a great security in the script as far as that was concerned and i think fernando just um in it, like all the great directors they were just they allow things to happen and uh, they allow actors to be creative and to make choices. But you always know that ultimately Fernando has the, uh, has the real choices to make in the editing suite. And he says himself that's, uh, that's when he makes the film, once he's editing it. Um, but uh, I, th I think there was the overriding thing was between the three of us, a great deal of trust and respect uh, for each other. And... Um, I, 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 you know, it, it was just everybody. It really was a, a, a group uh, project. This uh, everyone had a great contribution to make, and um, we had producers that, uh, unlike producers I've worked with in the quite unlike producers I've worked with in the past, people who are intelligent, who know how to talk, <laughs> who know um, getting this story made. They're, they're not making. Um, they're not making a blockbuster. They're, they're being honest to, to the material. And that all plays into the daily life on set. Yeah, and one of the things not I have to ask you other, know. Not decrying other uh, producers I work with, say, they <laughs> but there was a kind of uh, something about these people that was different. Well, and, and to me, you, you mentioned, you know, just kind of being true to this story. This story seems to have so much resonance. It seems to have really kind of touched a nerve with our audiences. Um, uh, what do you think, what do you think the film has, you know, gone beyond just being a story about these two heads of the Catholic Church? And there seems to be a more universal reaction to it. Yeah, well, I think what we, um, we don't present a specific point of view. We present two men debating and arguing points of faith, uh, political issues, um, emotional issues. Um, and I think from that, uh, people can take what they want, like all great art and great theater. Um, 
it's up to the audience to interpret uh, what they're seeing. And I think audiences have welcomed this opportunity to be able to think and to d discuss themselves about the, what we discuss on screen. And I know personally, and from uh, other people working on the film, the producers especially, the response from uh, all sorts of areas to this film uh, has been quite unlike anything I've been involved in before. I've had more emails from people from my past and my, my present friends, um, and uh, Catholics, non-Catholics, who have really found that this film has touched something in them. And I think uh, it presents, you know, just the, the idea that you can talk uh, with, with compassion about things that you uh, quite vehemently disagree with is is very important now and you know we have um i think people see in this this kind of it's uh there's a, there's a, is a sense of optimism that we can do something as as citizens to to change our lives um to do with the environment to do with the refugee crisis to do with the economic crisis um and there's a, a sense that uh, that we, it can come from within us. I think um, you see it no more than uh, the the young people in the movements uh, about the environment, Greta Thunberg, and the, anyone who follows her. Um, I think it's all part of that same picture. Um, and you know, the, on the other hand, we're confronted daily by our uh, political leaders, world leaders. Who are not talking peace? Who are not talking about uh, building bridges and not walls? They're talking about entirely the opposite. And um, you know, the world is burning around us, and um, we, the people, need to be able to do something. And I think you get a sense of that from this film. And on top of that, the film is it, the film is really funny. At times, too. I mean, I mean, it almost plays kind of like a comedy in certain parts of it. Um, was there any improvisation? I'm thinking particularly of that of the scene at the end with the two popes watching the the soccer, the football game. Yeah. Um, was there, was there any kind of room to to have that kind of improvised conversational feel? Well, the the soccer scene is all uh, completely improvised between the two of us, and we shot that. You know, at the end of those scenes um, that we had together, so um, we were very comfortable in in talk, uh, talking about football. Um, but I, you know, I it was a real surprise for me when I saw the film for the first time uh, with a, a big audience, and that was in uh, in Telluride. Um, how much they laughed, and I realised that uh, it was very important that they laughed. And very important that they laughed at that opening image of uh, Pope Francis on the telephone uh, trying to book a, a plane ticket. Um, <laughs> because once people laugh at that beginning, um, you could feel them relax, sit back, and go, oh, "I can, I can watch this film. This isn't going to be a, a very, you know, grey um, kind of pessimistic." Uh, two-hour film with two old men talking. It's, uh, there's going to be something in it for us. And, um, and I know we didn't play it for laughs, um, but they, they were in the, the sense of humor uh, is there in the script. And the sense of humor comes from, obviously, Tony and myself um, not being too pompous about what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I think it's important that the humor really is. Well, you know, it's interesting because you said you said earlier, you know, that you never initially wanted to be an actor. And yet in your career, you've done what I think a lot of actors can't and or won't do, which is you've gone back and forth between film and television. And you keep coming back to the theater. You were just on Broadway this last season with Eileen Atkins. Um, so what drives your choices? Is it you know, oh, I've done a film, now I want to do a play, or is it just the project that comes to you? What what drives the choices of, of what you do? Well, obviously, you make a choice of, of, of the projects, and uh, I, all sorts of reasons. Um, you can't always uh, follow your, um, your political instincts uh, in making films. Um, you hope you can find something in a role or in a, a character that uh, you can agree with and sympathize with. 
And so films like The Two Popes are, are quite rare, where it's been for me after, what, this, I'm in my 48th year uh, of acting, and this has been one of the most complete experiences of filmmaking with elements of what I know I can do in the theater. And, um, and even uh, I try to get in a bit of musical theater there with the, the <laughs> um, it's not quite Miss Saigon, but it's, uh, it's in there. <laughs> um, but I, I enjoy what I do and I, I enjoy and look for something where I can have an effect on an audience. And, uh, I think, in the theatre is where I feel it most. You know, you said I've just uh, done this play on Broadway, and it um, it was a play that um, provided a lot of questions but no answers. And the it was the response we got and the, the response you could feel in the in the theatre was a, a you know a thousand or eight hundred people working at uh, understanding this piece, and um, it's very rewarding work that uh, you can get to do, and. You know, even the times when it is just pure, pure entertainment, it's uh, it's it's enjoyable. I still enjoy it. That's the that's the main thing. So, is there? A, it's always interesting to me at this point, in, you know, in your career, when you really do have this variety of opportunities to do television and theater. Um, is there anything that you haven't done yet that you really want to tackle? Well, the, the irony is that. Uh, you know, you talk about two popes being uh, funny and uh, it's being called a dramedy or whatever. Um, and it's funny because we didn't set out to make it funny. But what I would like to do uh, is uh, to successfully make a comedy. I think it's the hardest thing. I mean, we um, we hint at it as much as we can in uh, in The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, which is being released in the uk at last uh this, the end of this month i think um and i think that's the hardest thing to do i'd like to make a comedy in the style of a you know an alec guinness film or a, a jimmy stewart <laughs> film before it's uh before it's too late i'd like to have a go at that well jonathan price uh congratulations uh it's, it's just such a wonderful film and uh best of luck we're recording this uh the day before the golden globe so uh, best of luck there. Yeah. Everybody go to see how I feel then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the uh, Oscars and the Screen Actors Guilds, Grammys, and uh, stay tuned for more interviews throughout the season. Uh, Jonathan, congratulations. Uh, real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. And you. Thanks. Bye.